Want to know why? Ask how. Howard, the humongous. Donald Trump is pushing buttons. He's pushing them big time. And they are buttons built into our biology. But what buttons are they and why in the world are they built into our biology? Here's the proof of what Donald Trump is accomplishing. A Google nurse search for current news on Jeb Bush produces a meager 3,830,000 hits. Sounds like a lot, but Bernie Sanders produces two, two times that amount, over 6,500,000 hits. Hillary Clinton is three times Jeb Bush. She produces 10,600,000 hits. But what about Donald Trump? Where does he stand? Donald Trump produces seven times as many hits as Jeb Bush, four times as many hits as Bernie Sanders, and nearly three times as many as Hillary Clinton. He produces 28,600,000 hits in a Google News search. So what is Trump's secret? First of all, he claims that his crowd a few days ago in Mobile, Alabama at Ladd Peebles Football Stadium was the biggest for any candidate yet. He claims that whereas Bernie Sanders' biggest crowd was 27,500 in Los Angeles, Donald Trump had a crowd of 30,000 people. Now, Politico, a, main, a magazine on the inside of the political track, says that Trump is exaggerating, that he is not telling the truth. It says that his crowd was a mere 20,000. One way or the other, Donald Trump, Trump is hitting all of us, and he's hitting us hard. What is he hitting in all of us? In all probability, he's hitting dopamine. Dopamine is the chemical that goes off when you find somebody who you think is outrageous, and you are righteously indignant against him, the way some of us are righteously indignant against Donald Trump. Donald Trump rails with righteous indignation against immigrants and just about everybody else that he can find. Um, that righteous indignation is a drug. Again, it's dopamine. Then there's serotonin. Serotonin is the drug that courses through your system when you feel other people are bowing down to you, or that you have bested them, that you are on top of them in the hierarchy. And third, there is the most obvious drug of all, testosterone, the male, strong, aggressive uh, hormone inside of us. Um, in other words, Donald Trump is goosing the hormones of hierarchy. Um, or you could put it this way, Donald Trump is a drug. But where does his power to drug us come from? Well, there's a guy named Kent Bailey. Kent Bailey is the man who invented the term paleopsychology in 1987. I founded a group called the International Paleopsychology Project in 1997. That term had been around for 10 years, relatively inactive, but the guy who put it on the map was Kent Bailey. And Bailey has an explanation for the Trump phenomenon. He says that America has been progressively feminized and the archetypal male has virtually disappeared from the society. He says that the, the archetypal male, the alpha, alpha male, has been replaced by alpha females. And he, Kent is obviously conservative, loves the alpha femaleness of people like Phyllis Schlafly, Sarah Palin, and Ann Coulter. Um, but Bailey says that neither of these women could possibly go head-to-head -head with Vladimir Putin or Kim Jong-un. He's apparently never heard of Margaret Thatcher <laughs> and what she accomplished. He feels, Kent Bailey feels, that to go up against these guys, the bad guys of our time, Putin and Kim Jong-un, takes a man. And not just any man, a manly man. He says that, quote, Donald Trump takes primal maleness to levels unseen for at least half a century. A big claim. He says that Donald Trump is a testosterone-driven alpha male. And another quote from Bailey, he is Attila to the Huns. He is Winston Churchill to the desperate allied forces. Big words. The question is, do we need what, Donald, what, what uh, Kent Bailey is praising? Do we need a testosterone-driven warrior? Well, yes, having warriors in your society is not unique 
to capitalism. It is not unique to post-industrial man. It is not unique to patriarchal societies. It is not unique to human beings. Mats of sea enemies battle each other. They're big communities, and they battle each other on the rocks off the coast of places like Carmel, California. And in the middle of a patch of sea anemones are normal sea anemones. Sea anemones whose job is to find food, eat it, digest it, and contribute to the well-being of the group. But on the outer fringes, on the periphery, on the margins, there are a whole different kind of sea anemone. These are warrior sea anemones. They are built with weapons. They have barbs that are like harpoons. They're on threads and they're poisoned. And these warriors are built to face down enemy warriors, the warrior in an enemy group of sea anemones. They are built that way biologically. In ants, in some ants, 10% of the females are warriors. They're twice the size of their fellow females. They're built like battle tanks. That's done by biology. That's not done by, again, capitalism or patriarchy. Why do societies need warriors? Because social groups get together, they are wonderful at bonding, and then they make war with other social groups. That's been happening for 3.5 billion years since the first bacterial colonies made war with weapons of mass destruction with chemical weapons. Do you need warriors to protect yourself in a world in which nature herself has made war a central part of the evolutionary process? You sure as heck do. do. Now, something amazing has been happening in Western civilization since 1650. It's outlined in my book, The Lucifer Principle. There, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the Lucifer Principle. And it's outlined in gorgeous detail in Steven Pinker's book, The Better Angels of Our Nature. And that is the factor of the peace has gone up in the Western world by a factor of 10. Um, your odds of dying of violent death at the hands of a fellow human being in 1650 were 10 times what they are today. Your odds of dying a violent death in a so-called peaceful indigenous society that lives in harmony with nature and its fellow human beings is 10 times what it is today. We have 10 times less violence, 10 times more peace, which means we have much more room for the anemones in the middle who carry on the basic processes of life versus the anemones on the outskirts who are the warriors. But we still need warriors. We still, we still live in a world in which the violence of bacteria is still built into us. How do we know that? Well, first of all, the holy books that are the cornerstone books of civilizations, the Vedas, the Bible, the Old Testament, um, and the Iliad and the Odyssey are all books about war and warrior males. Because 2,700 years ago to 2,300 years ago when those books were written, violence between groups was taking place all over the place. Is violence between groups still active today in a time when peace has increased by a factor of 10? You bet. Look at ISIS. Look at Boko Haram. Look at Al-Qaeda. Every single one of those groups is based on the warrior ideology that came from a warrior prophet, Muhammad himself. His followers, as you know, conquered a territory 11 times the size of the conquest of Alexander the Great, five times the size of the Roman Empire, seven times the size of the United States within 100 years of his death, and the ideology of war as the be-all and end-all of life, jihad it's called, is still very much alive in this militant jihadist culture. In fact, there's a new video, it's extraordinary, it's horrible, in which a two-year-old comes running into a room enthusiastically with a giant knife in his hand, runs over to a teddy bear, and it takes him two minutes, but he methodically saws off the head of the teddy bear, while his father, who is wielding the camera, shouts, Takfir! 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 And the kid shouts joyously, Takfir! 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 Which roughly translated means, I spotted an apostate, I have spotted an unbeliever, I'm going to take off his head. So we live in a dangerous world. And societies work on balances, often balances between opposites. The balance between male and female, having sufficient femaleness in your society and sufficient maleness, is a necessary balance. And unfortunately, we still need a small number of, of our warrior males, and we need to respect them. But we, does that mean that we need Donald Trump? 
Does that mean we need his approach to giving you dopamine, serotonin, and testosterone? I certainly hope not. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make. Or, want to know why? Ask how. And now, for that off button, I think I've figured out how to find it.